All right, if you can't tell, I absolutely love NCAA Wrestling Conference Weekend. And I've been looking through all the rankings and, and trying to figure out what are the top matchups that I want to see. What are the matches that, if they're on, I'm stopping what I'm doing, I'm watching. So I've got the top 11, my 11 favorite potential matchups of Conference Weekend. And I have one, two, three, four, five that I have starred that I think could also be NCAA Finals matches. That's how good these matches are. That's how good this weekend is. Starting with number 11, NC State's Ed Scott versus Virginia Tech's Bryce Andonian at 157 pounds. If you know, you know. If you've seen one of their meetings, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This one has had wild swings in the results. We had one match where Bryce Andonian won, I believe, 29 to 15, real score. Uh, it was a major decision. And then they wrestled the NCAAs. It was a pin for Ed Scott. Both these guys are fearless. They're really both competent upper body. They go for it. This is a match you're absolutely not going to want to miss if it happens at ACC's. Now, there's a little bit of question, right? We haven't seen Bryce since the Bryce uh, Andonia Meyer Shapiro match back in January. He's been out with injury. We're hoping that he's going to be fully healthy for this match and this tournament and the rest of this season so we can see this match and some other matches because if you know, Bryce Andoni, one of the most exciting wrestlers in America, no doubt. And I want to see him versus Ed at least one more time. Number 10, 141 pounds, Big 10, Brock Hardy versus Sergio Lemley. These two had a great match in the duel at Nebraska. It was back and forth. It looked like Lemley was going to win. Then Hardy came back and... It's every time it felt like Lemley was going to get it back, Hardy would just be savvy and, and find a way to score. And it was a high scoring affair. I want to see this one again at 141 pounds. I think we will potentially. This could be a, we haven't seen brackets yet, but this could be a quarterfinal match at the Big Ten Championships. And if so, it's going to be the one I'm keyed in on for sure. You're not going to want to miss it either. Very exciting. A lot of action. Sergio Lemley has been a revelation this year. You know, a true freshman. I thought, yeah, maybe he'll be good eventually. I did not think he could be this good, this fast. He's the real deal. He could place this year. No question in my mind. Number nine, Rocco Welsh versus Edmund Ruth. Now, I, I am really high on Rocco Welsh this season. If you've listened to Flow Wrestling Radio Live, the podcast I do with, with Ben Askren and JD, uh, you know I'm high on Rocco. I think he's really good and really tough. And this is a huge opportunity for him. I believe he's lost this match previously, Edmund Ruth. Um, one of the tougher guys at 174 pounds. And I think that Welsh, while he's taken some, some losses this year, he's been in every match. And I want to see, is he someone that can climb, start to climb the ranks and, and go from not just an All-American contender, but someone that could place really, really high. If he can get this match against Edmund Ruth, it would say a lot to that, um, to, to that case that, that Rocco Welsh is really someone that can contend with the best of the best at 174 pounds. Remember, he was right there with Shane Griffin, right? So I, I, I involved this match because it's all about Rocco. I want to see what he can do. Or it's a huge proving ground for Edmund Ruth to say, no, not today, not yet, Rocco Welsh. Number eight, if you saw this match in the regular season, you know why it's on this list. Dustin Plott versus Bennett Berge. These two had a great match in the duel at Oklahoma State. Berge, this is at 184 pounds. South Dakota State's Berge, 184, second-ranked Dustin Plott of Oklahoma State. Um, it was Berge early. He looked good, and there were some um, good attacks from Dustin Plott. We saw some takedowns that I know Damian Hahn doesn't think it was a takedown, but you know what? The, the ref on the mat said it was three, so it was three. I want to see it again, and I think we could see it again at the Big 12 Championships. It'll be exciting. Berge, he's not going to be served by holding back. He's going to have to attack. Dustin Plott, I think, is going to want to send a message and not let it be as competitive, and he had to storm back last time. He's not going to want to have to do that this time. That's why it's my number eight. Number seven, another Big 12 match. This one at 157 pounds. Iowa State's Cody Chittum versus UNI's Ryder Downey. Chittum looked to be the better man most much of this match, but Ryder Downey, who has been one of the bigger surprises this season, especially at 157, he came back late, got a late takedown and a and near fall to win this match. And now I think Cody Chittum is is extremely tough. He's been in a lot of matches. He has a lot of great matches, uh, a lot of great wins already in his freshman campaign, and I'm certain he wants to get this one back. But Ryder Downey doesn't have many boring matches, either does Cody. And I think when they 
have this rematch, if they have this rematch, I think it's going to deliver. I think it's going to be entertaining. I think you're going to see Cody Chittum probably wrestle with a little more respect. I don't know if he's not respectful, but he certainly wasn't aware of some of the tricks that Ryder Downey has. I mean, this is a guy who's got one of the best tilts in NCAA wrestling at 157 pounds. So Chittum will have to be aware there. Chittum's pace is a real thing. And I still think even though he's been maybe a little up and down, I think Chittum's someone we could see placing really high at 157 pounds this year. I think I think Cody is is that good. All right, my number six match. This is an NCAA final potential match. I, I really think it could be. We saw it at the duel. Matt Ramos versus Drake Ayala. Now, if you watch this match, you probably may be wondering why it's so high on my list because it wasn't the best match, right? But you have a couple things going for it. One, both Ramos and Ayala, I think typically will wrestle more offensive matches, especially Ramos. Um, I think for Drake, he waited too long to, to work for an attack. I think he's going to have to have a more offensive game plan earlier in this match. He's not going to be able to sit around and wait because Ramos is, um, he already tried that game plan and it didn't work against Ramos. So this is, obviously this is number one versus number two in America. It could obviously be an NCAA final at some point. And I think Matt Ramos doesn't wrestle too many boring matches. And the last one was to a, to a slight degree, even though there were some really exciting flurries in there. I think this one will be a little more wide open, especially if it's going down in the Big Ten finals. Next one up. We didn't see this one this year, but we really wanted to. Real Woods versus Jesse Mendez. Now, Mendez started the year. We said this could be a guy that could enter the title contending conversation and save his loss to... Um, to Cole Matthews, nothing would suggest he can't be that guy. And now Cole Matthews is back and looks like he's going to be once again in the mix to, to place this year. But Jesse Mendez, he can kind of score from everywhere. He's really good on his feet. He's hard to take down. Great athlete. He can wrestle from ties and space. Real Woods, great hand fighter. Left-handed single leg takes down just about everyone. And here's what could be the difference. Real Woods top work. He's really good getting wrists. Riding tough, getting turns, that's a big test for Jesse Mendez. We've seen it at times in the past, Jesse Mendez can be ridden. Can Real Woods ride him? Can that be the difference in this match? I believe this could be an NCAA final. I don't think that's going to surprise anyone to hear that. Both these guys are, are class. We've already seen that Real Woods can wrestle in this weight class uh, in the NCAA finals. He was there a year ago. For Jesse Mendez... He was right there, and that's kind of been a little bit of the story. He's right there with Bo Bartlett. Can he get over the hump against a Bo Bartlett? Can he get over the hump against a real Woods? There's no doubt in my mind he's going to be in this match. The question is, can he take that next step? If he can take that next step here, all bets are off for Jesse Mendez at, at the national tournament. I, I firmly believe that. Next up, this will this is also number one versus number two. It's my number four most anticipated match. It's Ryan Crookham versus Vito Arujo. We've already seen this match once this year, and it was maybe one of, if not the biggest upset of the season when Ryan Crookham took out Vito Arujo. Uh, now, Vito has been, you know, it's not like he took that loss and then he's just been rattling off and killing everybody. It's like Vito's been in and out of the lineup. He's had some close matches. He had a really close one with Missouri's Cade Moore. So I, I feel like in a lot of people's minds, after Vito lost that, you said, He'll definitely get him the next time. But what we've seen from Kirkham and what we've seen from Vito, I can't say this is anything more than a coin flip at this point. Kirkham has had uh, undoubtedly a better season than Vito. Not, not just the win he has over him, but otherwise he's had a better season. But everyone knows that 100% Vito Rujal is not just the best in the country, right? He's, he's the best in the world. The question is, will we see that Vito? Um, I can't wait to find out that answer, which will be on Saturday night at the EIWA Championships. I can't wait for that one. That's the number four most anticipated. Number three, the big boys. Wyatt Hendrickson, the great American hero, as we call him, versus Younger Bastida. Um, I think Younger has slowly been working his way, eating his way up the food chain at this weight class. Now, he was at 197 last year, up and down, and it turns out, Seems like a lot of that was related to the weight class. He's moved up to 285, and he's undefeated. He won CKLV. He just beat Zach Elam. He's beaten a lot of really good guys this season. Um, he beat Colton Schultz. And now the next big test awaits Yonger Basita. It's Wyatt Hendrickson, who is 
the most dynamic scorer, not just maybe in the country, or not just in the weight class, but maybe the country, right? This guy routinely leads the NCAA in, in pins and techs and one of the most dominant wrestlers. He's so good on top. He's always working for the fall. Pin Cassiope last year. This guy is, is just uh, unbelievable. Now, I think, I still think that Wyatt is the favorite in this matchup, though I know a lot of people think that Younger Bastida can not only win this match, but win NCAAs and beat the likes of Greg Kirkfleet. Now, we saw that Wyatt Hendrickson wrestled Greg Kirkfleet. It was a dominant loss, uh, or a dominant win for Kirkfleet, I should say. But that was maybe not the best representation of Wyatt Hendrickson in that, in that match. Everyone knows he was dealing with a little bit of an injury. How much that impacted the match, I'm not saying it would make up 15 points, but I think Wyatt, you would safely say, could wrestle Kirkfleet a little bit tougher. But I love how heavyweight's sort of playing out here. Everyone's sort of working their way up, and now we'll get some real finality here for who's the top contender versus Greg Kerfley. Will it be Wyatt Hendrickson or Younger Bastida? Can't wait for this one. Younger's one of my favorite guys to watch on his feet. He's so dynamic. He's got a great high crotch, great ability to finish on bigger guys, and that's exactly what he's going to have to do to beat Wyatt Hendrickson at the Big 12 Championship. So very, very uh, excited for that match. You're going to love it if you get to watch it too. The number two is probably the match you think I'd put number one. It's Keegan O'Toole versus David Carr. Now, this is it. For most people, this is that's why it's my list. I want to know your list, by the way. I want you to put your most anticipated. You don't have to do top 11. That's, that's maybe a little over the top. But I want to know your most anticipated matches. My number two is actually Keegan O'Toole versus David Carr. Um, now, we've seen this one three times in the past. We thought we'd see it last week. We didn't. And I, the reason it's not number one, there's a couple reasons. One, I feel like we're going to see a really conservative game plan from both guys. That's a prediction. I don't know that. They both might come out and let it fly and, you know, try to establish themselves. But I feel like David Carr, after last year's NCAA finals, would be like, man, I'm not going to show too much. I'm going to be, I'm going to unleash my best game plan for the biggest match. And I think for Keegan O'Toole, maybe there's a little bit of that going on too. Th these are just my predictions. They might both come out and say, let's attack as much as possible, put 10 points on the board. That's just my prediction of what I think we'll see. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's number two because these are two of the best wrestlers in America, you know, kind of regardless of not just NCAA wise, but I mean, I think these are both world champions at the, at the age level. I think these are both guys that we could see wrestling at the senior level at a, at a very high level. Um, and right now we've got, we've got Kyle Dake and Jordan Burroughs and Jason Alf, those are the top guys at 74 kilos. But these two could be the future there, right? There's there's no denying that. And I can't wait for the next installment of this rivalry. Keegan O'Toole versus David Carr, they've got to get there. I think they'll get there. Big 12 championships Sunday night, it's going to be a great one. But number one, this is, and this is more, it's not just the importance. I think it's an important match. It's not, I'll be honest, it's not as important as some of these other matches, which are num number one versus number two and could be NCAA finals matches. But I just think this is gonna be the most exciting action-packed match that we could have uh, of Conference Weekend. And that's Mitchell Messenbrink of Penn State versus Dean Hamity of Wisconsin. Now, if you watched either of these guys, you know they wrestle with incredible pace. They attack a ton. They're both really dynamic leg attackers. They're good in the scrambles. So I'm excited for this one for a couple reasons. One, and the main reason, is I think both these guys are so exciting, it's almost an impossibility that this will be a boring match. In fact, I think there's a guarantee it's going to be exciting, and there's going to be a lot of flurries. Um, we're going to see both guys firing leg attacks probably in the first 20 seconds of this match, if I had to guess. But also, for Mitchell Messenbrink, we, we've kind of watched, I mentioned this with Younger, he's kind of been eating his way up the food chain. We've seen a little bit of that with Mitchell as well. Right, 165, deepest weight class in the country. I agree with that. Mitchell's beaten Caliendo. He beat Amin. He beat Amin soundly. Worse than we've ever seen Amin beaten. So now here's his next big test, potentially. Right Now they both got to get there. I know all that. But the next big test, I think, is, is Dean Hamity. And I think Hamity presents some unique challenges. He's really good on top. He's really dynamic on his feet. He's got a lot of leg attacks. I think he's competent in scrambles. Can he scramble with Mitchell? That's the question. Mitchell beats him, then it's really the next two bars for him to clear 
are the last two guys I talked about, David Carr and Keegan O'Toole. But for me, this is the match where I'm most excited for. I, you've maybe mentioned me uh, say this on the show in previous weeks, but I think this is going to be an incredible match. I can't wait for it. Um, that's my top 11 most anticipated matches of conference. But I want to know yours. Which matches can't you wait for? Which one did I forget? Which one did I snub? I want to hear from you.